All right, so I'm back with part two of my book haul. The first part was mostly books that I had bought at Chapters and with my gift cards and also some review copies and copies that I've borrowed from people. This is predominantly books that I have bought. Actually, it's all books that I bought at a used bookstore. So there are actually two used bookstores. The first one is one that I discovered in Ottawa, just uh, kind of near my neighborhood, a little bit further out. And I was with Catherine from uh, The Lady Critic. Uh, and we were going out for a movie. We had a bit of time and kind of stumbled upon this cute used bookstore. I brought in all my old books and got some credits. So that's what I did with that. And then um, just recently I was in Toronto, which has one of my favorite used bookstores, BMV. So if you've ever, if you're ever in Toronto, there's two actual locations. One is closer to the Eaton Center. The other one's at Young and Eglinton. But I love both of these stores uh, equally. Actually, probably not equally. I like the, <laughs> I like the Eglinton one better. And anyhow, I, you know, I went a little crazy. Don't tell my husband. <laughs> but uh, I guess we'll get started. Uh, so the, the first grouping here is from the little bookstore in Ottawa. And the first book that I got with my credits is Lisa Gardner's Touch and Go. And this is like a thriller kind of mystery, murder mystery novel. I really, really like this author and I read pretty much all of her books. And... So this one came out in November of 2013. It's from Penguin. Essentially what it is is um, someone's investigating the abduction of an entire family. And obviously there are family secrets and you're trying to solve the crime essentially. I mean these books, you know what you're reading when you're getting into them really. There's not a lot of explanation or plot needed to, to, describe, to describe these books. Secondly, I got Turn of Mind. And this is by uh, Alice LaPlante. And again, in my last video, I mentioned that I really like books that kind of deal with memory and who you are if you don't have your memory and trying to find your memory if you've got amnesia and things like that. And this kind of goes hand in hand with that. And this came out in July of 2011 and it's from Random House. And it's about a doctor, Dr. Jennifer White. She's retired, but she has dementia. And one day her neighbor is found killed with her fingers surgically removed. So obviously, this is the first person that comes to mind because she's a neighbor, a doctor, probably knows how to surgically remove fingers and it's kind of like, did she do it? Didn't she do it? She doesn't know if she did it or not because she's got dementia and her memory is not as good and so you're kind of trying to unravel the mystery along with the narrator and I kind of like that. The narrator is obviously not reliable because, well, she can't remember anything. So it's not too long. Looks pretty good. I'll probably get through this really quickly. Thirdly, I got... The Penny Pinchers Club by Sarah, uh, Sarah Strohmeyer. And I just finished reading three three of her YA novels. So, uh, How Zoe Made Her Dreams Mostly Come True, Smart Girls Get What They Want, and The Secrets of Lily Graves, I think. I really like them. They're quick. They were easy reads. They're fun for over the summer. And so when I was in the store, I noticed that there was an adult book that Sarah Strohmeyer had written. And this was actually written in 2010, so July of 2010. So she's been around for a while, I didn't realize. And I figured, well, if I liked her YA stuff, then I'd probably like her adult stuff. And this one is about um, Kat, who has a bit of a shopping addiction. She likes to spend money, and I might be able to relate to that. I mean, I might not go out and buy a lot of clothing, but I do like to go out and buy a lot of books, clearly, as you'll see in this video, really. It's a, it's a bit ridiculous. I had to split this up into two hauls, so... Slightly embarrassing, but what are you going to do? Um, so she has a bit of a spending problem. And she leaves her rich fiancé because she's in love with somebody who's not necessarily make as much money as her rich fiancé did. And later on, years later, she finds out that her husband that she was madly in love with is actually having an affair. She suspects that he's having an affair. She's not quite sure, but she suspects. And she thinks it's probably because of her spending habits. And so... She's decided to kind of try to curb her spending habits and see what happens. And in the mix of all this, her ex comes back to, I don't know, reclaim, reclaim her? But can you reclaim? I guess you can't reclaim somebody. You can't claim somebody that wasn't yours and she's not a, she's not an object. Um, but he comes back into the picture, let's just say. So she, he goes back into the picture and there's probably all kinds of shenanigans and mess involved with that. So that is the Penny Pictures Club. Next up is Kate White's Hush, and I've seen this around for a long time. This has been out since 2010, so four years now. And I don't know, I'm I'm such a cover whore. If the cover is good, I want to read it. And I 
kind of like simplistic. I don't like that her name is humongous, but I do like the color. I like the little heart. I love the, the lettering on this. So when I saw the cover, I was like, oh, I don't want to read that. I don't even know what it's about, but that's what I want to read. And so when I saw it at the store, I got it. It's only five bucks, I think. And so this is a thriller. Um, and there's a woman named Lake and her husband is suing her for full custody of the kids because they've just recently got separated. And she has a co-worker at the fertility clinic that she works at and he is killed. And the police are looking into who the killer is. And she kind of lies to the police because she may have had a little bit of an affair with him and you know, that's not something she wants her husband finding out. If she's, he's suing for custody of the kids so he's not... She's not sure how to go about things, so she, she lies to the police in a murder investigation, and I don't know, I'd hazard a guess that that's probably not a good thing. So, it has to do with the lying and the clues, she, like, she, the, the police are looking for things, and then I guess she starts getting clues as to who the murderer is on her front doorstep, and sounds interesting. Hopefully I'll be able to sleep after this, because I had a, a, a very unrestful sleep the other day, I heard, heard things going along my roof and I, two in the morning, your brain kind of does weird things, especially when you read books like this. Next up, four or five dollars again, uh, The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith, otherwise known as J.K. Rowling, and really, I don't think you need to know much more about this book other than that J.K. Rowling wrote it, because it's, it's J.K. Rowling. I mean, how do you not buy a book by J.K. Rowling? Um, so this came out in April of 2013 from Little Brown and Company, if you want to know what it's about, essentially it's about uh, a private investigator who's lost his leg in Afghanistan. He's got a private investigator business and it's kind of going a bit downhill. He's not getting a lot of clients. He's not making enough money. And um, then this famous model dies. And apparently it's deemed a suicide, but um, her brother doesn't really think so. So he's getting the help of the private investigator to try to figure out what happened to this famous model who is also uh, known by the nickname the cuckoo so uh, i think this would probably be interesting the model's probably got some interesting stories going on in her life and you know a bit of a train wreck and who doesn't like looking at a train wreck it's horrible to say but everybody does it next up the boy in the suitcase and this is by lenny Caberbowl and Agnette Fries. I'm going to guess that's how you say their names. Um, this was written quite a while ago. It was actually published in 2008, but in a different language. And so then it was translated in 2011. And it's by, like, a, it's, it's published by Soho Crime. So I'm not sure how big the publishing house is. I don't really know much about this publishing house. It doesn't strike me as a big one if I've never heard of it. But I mean, I'm sure there's things that I don't know about the publishing business. And this is about a woman who um, has this friend, an estranged friend, they haven't been friends for a while, but she comes back in the picture and gives this woman a key. And is like, you need to go and check this out. So this woman goes and turns out that this is a key to a public locker. And she opens up the locker and lo and behold, there is a suitcase there. And when she opens the suitcase, the boy in the suitcase, can you imagine what's in the suitcase? It's a boy. So, she's not sure what to do about this information that her friend is found murdered and i guess this book is all about what what is going on with the boy why is he there he's three years old what's happening she's trying to solve it solve solve this mystery um next up is a circle of wives by alice laplante uh this is the second alice laplante book in this little hall and this one came out more recently, just in March of this year, by Harper Collins, and this is um, there's a doctor who is murdered, and it turns out that he actually has three wives in three different cities. So that's a little bit interesting. And each of the wives is apparently very different, and they have to try to figure out who murdered him, and was it one of the wives, and why does he have three wives? And I'm sure probably the three wives don't know about each other, so bit of a shit show all around which I'm not averse to reading about next up these ones are from BMV so this one is the Gilly Salt Sisters by Tiffany Baker and this came out in 2012 by Hachette uh, I've got to go a little bit quicker because we're already at nine minutes um, anyhow they're 
this is about two sisters, clearly, who live on a salt farm in Cape Cod. And Joe's a bit of a loner, and Claire's a little bit more popular. Claire, you know, though, wants to kind of get out of the small town and explore and do things. Um, and the town actually thinks these girls might be witches. So, you know, I'm assuming they probably don't, you know, have a lot of fans in that town if they think they're witches. But nonetheless, this boy, Wit, who is kind of like the most eligible bachelor in town, falls in love with Joe. They fall in love. But he marries Claire. This is what the back of the book says. I'm not sure where the transition of that goes. How that happens. He falls in love with someone and he marries the other sisters. A little bit weird. And then it says years later, Claire is back um, at the farm with Wit's pregnant mistress. Which I'm only assuming is their sister. I don't know. Anyhow, apparently there's some sort of magical land going on in there. Um, but yeah, this is this is that. We're almost done, I promise. This other one, uh, this next one is called Four Seconds to Lose by K.A. Tucker. This is the third, um, in, it's like a companion series. They're not, you don't have to read them in order. Um, but I've read the other two, which are um, Ten Tiny Breasts and One Tiny Lie. I preferred One Tiny Lie to Ten Tiny Breasts, but I like them both equally. Or not equally, I like them both. Um, but I liked One Tiny Lie a little bit better. And this one is about the strip club owner in these two books, Kane. And he meets Charlie Rourke, which is a girl. I kind of like girls with boys' names. It's I think it's kind of cute. And she is a stripper at his club, and he falls in love. And forbidden, should they be together or not be together? And I mean, I guess they get together, but it's still fun to read anyways. Next is Slam by Colleen Hoover, and I got this book specifically because I kept seeing Katie and Emily tweeting about this, and Emily apparently read the whole trilogy within like a two-day span of time. So if it's good for them, it's good for me, and it's about um, a girl whose father dies. She's 18 years old, and then she meets Will. They have a really intense connection. They go on a date, and then bam, there's some sort of forbiddenness going on with this situation. Um, doesn't say what it is. I'm sure it's shocking, but uh, anyhow, they're not supposed to be together. So I think this is um, new adult. I guess is what you would classify this one as. A lot of people have read it. Next up, Mister um, Punambra's 24-hour bookstore by Robin Sloan. This was put out in 2012 by Harper. And it's about a 24-hour bookstore. A guy starts working there and realizes that it's probably not exactly what it looks like. Because, first of all, it's 24 hours. I don't know any 24-hour bookstores. Really, second of all, people keep coming in and checking out books, not buying books. They're looking at really obscure things. And he's going to try to figure out what exactly is going on in this, in this store. And last but not least... This is a book that I've been looking for a lot, and it's one of those ones I'm like, do I buy it, do I not buy it, do I buy it, do I not buy it, I'm not sure if I like it, but it sounds cool, and I eventually I found it at BMV, so I bought it, and it's House of Leaves by Mark the Dan Danielski, I don't, I don't know how to say that, it was published in 2000, but it was around before that, it was published by Random House, and it's kind of a weird, quirky book, it's essentially about a young family, um, and they buy a house, but the house is much bigger on the inside than it looks on the outside. And people get, you can kind of get lost, new rooms show up. And I guess their two daughters kind of, or their two children, I don't know if their daughters, just kind of wander off and they need to find them. There's also like some kind of horror element to it with like scratching noises and demons, beasts, I don't know. Uh, but it's really like weirdly written if you take a look. I'm sure you've all seen this before, but some of the pages are like that. Some of them are normal, more normal. Um, then you've got like a bibliography in the middle of here. Some of the pages only have like a sentence or two on the top. It's kind of weird. And some of them are like even just like this. So it's kind of weirdish. I don't want to say it's like a. I don't know. It's like one of those books that a lot of people have heard about, but I don't know anybody who's actually read it. So I'm going to try to read it. I'm not sure. Depending, if, Sometimes I find if it's too weird, then I can't really get into it. If it's like too artsy-fartsy, it's hard for me to read. So I'm going to try my best to get through this. 
Um, and I'm hoping that it's really good because a lot of people have really given it good reviews. So uh, we'll see. Anyhow, that's it for me. Hopefully you won't be seeing any more book hauls for a long time. Um, I can't afford to be buying books like this. Uh, I hope everyone's having a great day and happy reading.